He said, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. All right? Now, I was asking the Holy Spirit about that because I was just like, at one point, I was like, okay, what does this mean? Because I forget which, which gospel it says in earth, and another gospel actually says on earth. But one of the gospels says in earth. But I, so I asked the Holy Spirit, what does that mean, in earth? You know, and so the Holy Spirit said, it means in earthly vessels. So we have to, we have to be able to pray that the, the Lord kingdom come and his will be done in us as it is in heaven. Does that make sense? Because we're earthly vessels. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven, in us as it is in heaven. So the kingdom of heaven is within us. Jesus told the Pharisees that the kingdom doesn't come with observation or, you know, you don't look for it as there, here, or there. But no, he said the kingdom of God is within us. It's within you. All right, how is it within us? It's within us through the Holy Spirit. It's within, it's within us through the Holy Spirit. Now, what is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is God's rule over a territory. The kingdom of God is God influencing, influencing a territory with his culture, with his ways. That's the kingdom of God. The Bible also talks about the kingdom of heaven as well. It, it intertwines. The kingdom of heaven, in, a, in a, a lot of passages, talks more about the influence. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight in, in this conference. It talks about the influence of heaven. All right? Heaven is a place. Heaven has a culture. The kingdom of God is the culture of heaven. The rule of God is the culture of heaven. What's heaven like? There's no sickness. There's no death. Everybody's kind and loving. Right? It, I mean, it's, it's a culture that is just, it's like no other. It's a spiritual culture. You know, everybody's giving. It's better to give than to receive in heaven. So this is a culture that is the culture of God. And this is a culture that, that we're supposed to live. All right? And so we have to be like leaven that gets up in the dough and just influences everything around us. Amen? Let's go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. This is, of course, one of my favorite scriptures, but I want to bring some new light when it talks about influence. All right, let's talk about the foundation of our influence to the world. So it says in verse 33, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. All right, I want to talk about righteousness. The foundation of our influence to the world is God's righteousness. All right, the foundation of our influence to the world is God's righteousness. All right, what is righteousness? Righteousness means being in right position in God's eyes. It also means live by the word of God. All right, if somebody is righteous, in America, that means that they live by the Constitution. They live by the laws. They obey the laws of the land. All right? So being in righteousness means being in right position in God's eyes. Some people may think that it's right to steal from one another. But God's righteousness is giving to one another. You know, the world says that stealing is good. But God's righteousness is, says, no, you know, it's better to give than to receive. We shouldn't steal at all. So being in right position in God's eyes means living by how he wants you to live. All right? Matthew chapter 16, verses 5, because we're going to talk about another type of righteousness. I mean, no, there's more than one righteousness, right? Matthew chapter 16. Verses 5. And Jesus had to deal with this. And this is, this is another form of leaven as well, since we're talking about leaven being an influence. All right, so it says, when the disciples reached the other side, they had forgotten to bring any bread.
Jesus said to them, watch and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. And look at this. And they began discussing it among themselves, saying, we brought no bread. But Jesus, wait, but Jesus, aware of this, said, oh, you of little faith, why are you discussing among yourselves the fact that you have no bread? Now, see, they were like, they took what Jesus said differently. They didn't understand what he was saying. They didn't think he was, they were so focused on the bread, they didn't really get what he was saying because he just came out, you know, said it kind of like out of the open, you know, out of nowhere. And then it says, but, then he says, uh, oh, you little faith, why are you discussing among yourself the fact that you have no bread? Verse 9 says, do you not yet perceive, do you not remember the five loaves for the 5,000 and how many baskets you gather? Or the seven loaves for the four thousand, how many basket you, baskets you gather? How is it that you fail to understand that I did not speak about bread? All right. He says, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Then they understood that he did not tell them to beware of leaven, the leaven of bread, but of the teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. All right. So righteousness. The Pharisees' righteousness was kind of like a doctrine or a teaching that they had. So God's righteousness is his word, which is the gospel of the kingdom, because that's what we live by. So what he's saying, if you live by the Pharisees' you know, righteousness, their teachings, then you have to be aware of that. You can't, you can't live by their teachings and live by the way of the kingdom of God. So it was a little bit of a contrast there. And so you can compare that to um, teachings of today. Like say you go to a church and they're teaching something that's totally against the word of God. Or they take the word of God and kind of switch it up. And it's not really the, a, a good understanding or the right context of the word of God. Then they're teaching, they're teaching some type of pharmaceutical you know, uh, type of teaching. And so you have to be careful of that. And that's why when you read the Word of God, you have to read it by the Holy Spirit, right? You can't read it. The Word of God, the Word of God without the Holy Spirit will always say it's just a history book. You know, but when you have the Holy Spirit, you get revelation. So it doesn't become just a teaching. It becomes revelation that you receive. Um, one of the best ways to read the Word of God is with your imagination. How do you do that? When you read the Word of God... You know, tap into your imagination and allow the Holy Spirit to give you vision. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will actually take you to that point in vision of that passage of scripture that you're reading. Like say you're reading about Adam and Eve or when you're reading about King David. The Holy Spirit will sometime in a vision spiritually take you to that point so you can see exactly what happened. And I'm a witness of that. I've, I've experienced that many a time. I'm sure some of you have as well. Because um, you may have visions of what you're reading, and you might not really know it at first, but kind of a little bit later on, you'll realize, like, wow. You may come across that passage again, and you'll read it again, like, wow. I remember having a vision of that, and I was able to see exactly what happened. So that's how you read the Word of God. You read it with your imagination, because the Lord will he'll give you more understanding with visions. And, um, and I'm more of a visual person, so the Holy Spirit knows how to get things across to me. All right. So we have to be we have to be aware of pharmaceutical doctrines, I like to call it. So one of the best ways to be an influence for the kingdom in your community is to know the word of God. You have to know the word of God. It's very important. It's very, very important. You know, some people don't like to read the word of God. Get an audio Bible. You can listen to the Word of God. But it's so important to get the Word of God in your head. So it gets into your conscience, gets into your subconscious. So then after a while, you just automatically living out the Word of God. You know, and you can automatically recognize sin or recognize a teaching or something that's totally off. All right? Because we can't, we can't be an influence for the kingdom of God if we don't know the Word of God and, you know, um, somebody can come and kind of trip you up that knows the word of God better than you and can lead you to, you know, some type of weird doctrine. After a while, you can get caught up in something and, you know, something totally different from the kingdom of God and the word of God. And 
and you you end up being twisted mentally. You know, I've seen that happen. I've seen people, you know, who I grew up with in church, and they got connected with some other type of teaching or some other type of weird stuff, and they didn't know the word of God, so they didn't have anything to stand on. And so they, after a while, they got strung up, and they started dressing different and acting weird, and it was just, just crazy. You know, so we have to know the word of God. We have to know what the word of God says. It's very important. All right, so what is a Pharisee? Does anybody know what a Pharisee is? A Pharisee is like somebody in the church who goes and starts a whole other uh, denomination. All right? God never intended for the church to be divided into denominations. All right? And that's a denomination is somebody who uh, is a group of people who saw a scripture that they didn't agree with. And so they went <laughs> and twisted it and changed it up and made their own little you know, group or division of the church. That's what a denomination is. And I understand this because I grew up in a church all my life. I was a musician, I played at every denominational church there is. <laughs> and so I know what they believe, what they don't believe, and how they how they praise God, how they don't praise God, and what they allow. You know, it, it's so much stuff. So that's how the Pharisees, the, that's how the Pharisees were. But notice that they didn't have any influence on the people. You know, with all their doctrines and what they were teaching, they didn't have no influence on the people like Jesus did. Because people don't want that. You know, let's be honest. We don't, we don't want, and I'm talking, I'm talking about the millennials. We talk about this in Bible study as well. Young people, we don't, they don't want all this doctrine. They want to see the power of God. So that can draw them to know more about God. All right? So we have doctrine. Doctrine is good, as long as it's the gospel of the kingdom, as long as it's from the word of God. But young people don't want that at first. They want to see the power of God so that they can be drawn, and then you can give them doctrine. The Bible says it's, it's the, the kindness and love of God of Jesus that draws men to repentance. It's not doctrine. All right? So to be an influence, of course, we have to know the word of God, and some of you here, you know, the Lord is going to, is leading you and calling you to be pastors and teachers and um, and he wants to use you to, to teach the word of God. But it has to be from the word of God. You know, and it can't be first and foremost when it comes to outreach or being an influence in your community. Because the first thing people do when you start, you know, well, you need to go to church and this is what the Bible said. And, it, you know, the first thing people do is turn away. They're like, you know what? Go ahead. You know? But when they see the power of God, they see the love and kindness of God. When, when you can be with a friend and, and you go into McDonald's or, or you go into the store somewhere and they pick up a, a bunch of stuff that they want to buy, and you just be like, you know, I got this, and you pay for it. They're like, wow, thank you. I mean, just something little like that can really influence somebody. Wow, thank you. I appreciate that. You know, or you're in the, you the drive-thru at Burger King somewhere and, and you know, you're, you're picking up your food and you tell the person, you know what, um, the person behind me here, I want to pay for their meal. And you drive up and keep going, then the other person comes up and you're like, oh, the person up there, they, they, they uh, paid for your meal. You know you know how much of an influence that could be on somebody? And they can be like, wow. And that's opportunity to, you know, to tell them about the love of Jesus and, and give them the word of God by example. We have to live this by example. That's most, that's most important, that's most influential. So we can't, we can't be like the scribes or the Pharisees. We can't you know, take doctrine and make it our own and interpret it in our own way. We have to interpret scripture by the Holy Spirit. He's king. He is king. All right?